Uh, regular listeners of the program may have noticed that uh, absent from the introductions was one phone screener, Vince. And the reason is Vince is here now for a more thorough investigation <laughs> as to the goings-on of Friday, May 21st, the year 2009, at approximately 6.07 a.m. day that will live in infamy. This is the sort of backward-looking investigation the Barack Obama administration is not in favor of. <laughs> but we are here on the Armstrong and Getty Show. One, however, that is sorely needed. Sorely. Vince, how are you this morning? Uh, Larry King, guys, has revealed he has a son in his mid-40s. What? And uh, I actually have a clip of it. Me and you going out to the backyard playing catch despite my more, more Montgomery Burns physique. I am old. <laughs> now you see, now you see nice. well, Hold on for a second. Nice. Vince. Hold on for a second, Vince. Well done. Uh, that is very good. Very funny. He's a national treasure. Um, that is a funny Certainly story. Certainly a regional way. treasure. The funny thing about that story, and then we'll get back to Vince. Yes. Larry King's son that he didn't know he had yeah. is named Larry King Jr. <laughs> but what's the connection? How, do you, how is there a son you didn't know you had who's named Larry King Jr.? You'd think the mother would have mentioned it. <laughs> or you might have thought, my dad, Larry King Sr. Right. What can you tell me about him? Ma, I can't help but notice <laughs> I'm named Larry King Jr. <laughs> right. Is there any connection with the well-known TV talk show? <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, more on that later. <laughs> so uh, Joe sent me a e uh, text last night saying we've got many emails regarding the uh, situation with Vince yesterday morning. Would you like to address those and then and have them and then have Vince and I discuss, or how, how would you like to approach that? I I'm afraid uh, I'm afraid you'll you'll go crazy and scream at me if I approach it wrongly. So why don't you approach it in whatever way you see fit? Um, the the term anger management. Uh, Popped up a number of times. Well, I would say this. Uh, to start with, I don't care at all what people in emails think, and I really don't. That's the most uh, emotional, overreactive 1% of your customer base ever. Anybody who runs their business based on what emailers think is, is, is doomed. So I don't, I don't care what people in emails think, but I wonder if, is there a, is a, is there a, a theme with the Vince thing that we could approach? I think I'll just let you approach it. Okay, Vince, uh, ex explain what happened yesterday. I made a comment about uh, criticizing what you guys talk about in satire of the callers and emailers who, you know, complain what about what you guys talk about. And uh, and then Jack gave me a Alec Baldwin-esque. <laughs> Vince and I discussed this after the program yesterday. I think that uh, we, the hosts of the show, and uh, I believe Joe felt the same way, as Joe said yesterday during my rant, if you say anything I disagree with, I will let you know. Um, w your satire was too thickly veiled to understand that it was satire. Uh, what seemed to yes. be the crux of the problem. Yes, it, it, it had the feel of appearing in a bank lobby full of customers and saying, this bank is incompetent and all this money will disappear. And no one will get their money back. So it, it, and you could say I was satirizing bank robbers, but the, the the customers and the tellers might not get that. Yes. And afterwards, or if you had told them beforehand, or if it were clearly satire, it may have worked just fine. But uh, Vince and I discussed this yesterday, and everything is fine with that. And I understand. You know why I understand? Because I live in the world of attempting to do edgy humor. And when you do edgy humor, there is always uh, the possibility, well, not even the possibility. If you're going to do edgy humor for days, months, and years on end, there are going to be times that you go over that edge. Or you're not doing very good edgy humor. And, and frequently it will be of disastrous consequences. Oftentimes career-ending. <laughs> Oftentimes career-ending. That's what makes it so exciting. And... <laughs> And one of the things I always criticize uh, for various scandals that go on in the media is when somebody explains themselves that people will not take that explanation at face value. Right. They will not say, this is what I meant, I didn't mean to be racist, or this is what I meant that I didn't mean. And I take Vince for what he said, that he was meaning to be, meaning to be satirical. It, I just didn't understand it was satirical. You didn't understand it was satirical. 
and that's that. Well, actually, I, I did. Did you? I yeah. did not understand it was satirical. I did not. I did not. I did not grasp that at all. Yeah, I think a review of the tape uh, would reveal me saying, you know, he just he, he made a joke that didn't work. But I'm guilty. Of, I'm guilty of that often. Well, you know, mm. I would. I. I don't. What I don't want to have happen is for you to lose your willingness to walk the edge. Exactly. <laughs> You know, well, exactly. Vince, you said that, that happens often. There are, there are, you know, uh, there are solid base hits. Then there are foul balls. Then there are foul balls that go screaming into the stands and kill a little girl. <laughs> and those are very rare. <laughs> Yesterday may have been one. A foul ball that went into the stands and killed the spectator? Yes, exactly. But uh, fear not the foul ball. I mean, that's just part of the... Right. It's part of the reality we live with. So keep swinging for the fences. Thank you. And keep reaching for the stars. And keep your feet on the ground. Like Larry King Jr. <laughs> no relation. I do think I understand that, maybe you do too as well as anybody, the whole idea of trying to do edgy humor. If you, yes. if you try to make a joke that is going to be, you know, it's dancing on the edge of whether or not it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. If it's dancing on the edge, it's very funny because it's so, oh, my gosh, you shouldn't say that. But, yes. Yes. but if you cross that right. even very much, then it becomes a disaster. Yes, because especially in the repeating, whether in print or verbally, it sounds indefensible. Even though, you right, know, you really need to consider the spirit in which it's offered. Right, but, and like the, that's uh, out of that's out of fashion. Right, and then like the uh, the Wanda Sykes thing from a week or so ago. Then you get into discussing humor in very uh, serious tones, and Wanda skin is the fate. And once that happens, then the um, the the benefit is always to the people that are discussing it seriously because they can always take the high minded moral stance on the joke and make it make any joke seem like it was a horrific idea. Jack. It's like discussing the scent of a flower by looking at a photograph. I'm Joe Getty. So is he dancing on the edge, or is he... You dare to dance in the path of greatness. I think he does dare to dance in the path of greatness. He swings for the fences. Well, like Joe said, and then sometimes he fouls one off and kills a spectator. <laughs> but it rarely Which happens. It's amazing it doesn't happen more. It rarely happens. Yes, yes. Today, for instance... Yes, see, that was hilarious. It was gold. Very, very funny. It's comedy gold. As it often is. Yes. So anyway. Well done, young Vince. Well done.